John Huston's 1972 classic Fast City is nominally about prize fighting, but that's set dressing for a character study of an alcoholic who's seconds away from sliding off the earth. Stacy Keach is built slim, but he looks believable as middleweight Billy Tully, years removed from his best days in the ring. He's a bum, unreliable, poor, and drunk. He's staggering around Stockton, California, a town 100 miles inland from San Francisco, but 17 light years away culturally. I love this movie, which is odd because I can't stand boxing, but there's just so much going on with the psychology of Billy Tully and his inability to get his shit together. He remembers his salad days well and boasts of his conquests in the ring. Good, I had that bum hanging on. I was knocking him silly for six rounds. But the only opponent he needs to beat now is the Amber Liquid. Before I get too far into this, I have to highlight the incredible performance of Susan Tyrell as Oma Lee Greer, another drunk on Skid Row who winds up as Tully's codependent enabler. Tyrell got an Oscar nomination for this part, yet somehow lost to Eileen Hecker's performance and Butterflies Are Free. Tyrell is only one of two women with any lines in this typically Houstonian male-heavy film. But she does so much to counterweight testosterone with her delicate rendering of wilting flower Oma. She flits around from one man to another, with few internal resources to stand on her own. After meeting Tully in the bar for only the second time, it's just a matter of moments before she sees in him something she needs like oxygen. I love you so much. Billy Tully has a foil character in here as well. Ernie Munger, played by the disarmingly boyish Jeff Bridges. Munger is hungry to punch and win, but he lacks a killer instinct in the ring. As Tully is on his way down, I guess Munger is on his way lateral. This isn't the typical Star is Born trajectory, but it works here. Munger mostly flunks out of boxing after he gets his dewy girlfriend, Faye, pregnant, but he intersects with Tully at the beginning, middle, and end of the movie. Tully becomes a cautionary tale of what not to do. Faye is played by the delightful Candy Clark, and her first role, by the way. John Huston made a great many epic-scaled, masculine, manly men movies with such manly actors as Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, Paul Newman, and Sean Connery. The intimate despondency of Billy Tully seems a bit of a left turn in comparison, until you notice Houston steering towards it with such films as Wise Blood with Brad Dourif and Under the Volcano with Albert Finney, studying the riveting torture of spirituality and alcohol once again. Seeing the drunks shuffle around California looking for matches made me think of another wholly American portrayal of alcoholism, Lionel Rogozin's 1956 masterpiece On the Bowery. Rogozin's film is a groundbreaking mixture of documentary and reality, shooting a movie using the indigents of the Bowery as they were in real life, with no sets or lighting. Rogozin befriended his lead actor, Ray Salyer, on the Bowery and took the time to get to know him before proposing a movie. Every dime Salyer grounds out goes towards beer. Billy Tully pisses his day wages away on cheap whiskey. Salyer is full of big talk about what he's going to do to clean up. From now on, I'm not going to do it. And so is Tully. I was in bad shape the last time, I really was, but I can do it, I can get back into shape. Alcoholism is a pernicious disease with no romanticism, contrary to many versions which have showed up in film. And these two movies are charcoal gray about the prospects of those at the bottom of society. Ray Salyer actually drank himself to death just a few years after On the Bowery, and it's easy to see his impending fate. At the conclusion of Fat City, Ernie Munger sees the slurring Tully on the sidewalk trying to hustle a match. In a brilliantly acted moment, Bridges realizes what he sees and tries to get away. Tully makes him anyway and gets the kid to have a coffee with him in lieu of a drink. Asked to linger for a bit longer, Munger realizes he's probably seeing Tully for the last time. Talk a lot. Okay. Both of these movies make liberal use of the skid rows in their respective cities, showing how empty the American dream is for dispossessed alcoholics. Men linger on corners for a day of work which pay a subsistence wage, so they can drink it away at night and begin the process all over again tomorrow. Young fella like you ought to have a proper job. The cycle crushes all hope. There's no way to improve yourself if you're chasing a chemical demon while lying in a gutter. As an aside, the field handwork in Fat City calls to mind the Dust Bowl, which John Ford covered with his adaptation of Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. But the former bears little of the uplift the latter receives from Tom Joad figure, absent entirely from 1973 Stockton. Wherever there's a fight so hungry people can eat, I'll be there. There's a tradition of buoyant portrayals of liquor consumption in classic art, including the legendary Merry Drinker paintings by Dutch masters Judith Leister, Hendrik Terbrucken, and Franz Hals. 
These are uncomplicated and fun images, typical of the painting zeitgeist in Holland at the time. But the storytellers of the 20th century drilled down onto the disease to display its toll. And filmmakers have been especially drawn to the subject, maybe explaining why so many Hollywood types have been historically tortured by liquor. As someone who's had a much less fraught relationship with booze, I watch movies like Fat City and On the Bowery thrilled and thankful I've never woken up in a gutter, somehow dodging a genetic bullet. Finest in men's neckwear since 1982.